Good morning and welcome to Sunday School with Agape Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. I'm Reverend Troy Roland, and today we are going to be talking about Moses and Miriam praise God. Moses and Miriam praise God. Let's start off with a word of prayer. Our most precious, loving, and heavenly Father, we invite you into our minds, our hearts, and our souls this morning, Lord. May you put a veil over our eyes, Father, so that we may see only your word, Father. May you open up our hearts and our minds, Lord, and clear away those things from us, Father, that have happened this week so that we may be able to absorb your word, Father, so that we may use it to tell others, Father, of your goodness, your, your grace, and your mercy, Father. It is in Jesus' name, Lord, we pray and we thank thee. Amen, 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 and amen. Moses and Miriam praise God. Uh, as always, if you like these videos, give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down at the bottom so that way you don't miss any of them. Let's start by reading the end focus. Hopefully I can do this justice because this is kind of, I guess the word I'm looking for is intense. Uh, <laughs> but here we go. Fire department, call out. Over here, Ramona cried, coughing. <coughs> the, the smoke stung her eyes and was so thick that she couldn't see where the voice was coming from. The disaster had been sudden. One moment she was typing away at her desk. The next, there was a quick rumble from the ground that shook the floor and shattered the floor to ceiling windows. Part of the ceiling frame fell to the floor, dragging down tiles and light fixtures. Some of the sprinklers came on and drenched everything nearby, but others were broken. The way to the exit stairs was blocked with flaming debris. Ramona prayed, Heavenly Father, please bring me to safety. She could hear the firefighters crashing through the wreckage to get to her. Over here, she shouted again. Ramona could see the shapes of the firefighters coming forward in the dark, knocking aside desks and chairs and filing cabinets. The water sprayed from their hoses sizzled and turned to steam as it hit the flames, adding to the chaotic scene. But after a moment, two of them emerged like Ghosts and crouched next to her. Praise God. I am so grateful to see you, Ramona cried. One firefighter said, just stay close. The other firefighter slid his arm around her and stood up. We'll get you out of here. Stick with me. In between coughs, Ramona said, <coughs> thank you, God. God is good. God is so good. The question for today asks, when have you spontaneously praised God after an emotional event? When have you spontaneously praised God after an emotional event? <laughs> I got a, a theory about that, um, about praising God. Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll get to it in our lesson today. Um, I'm not going to promise, but maybe I'll get to it today. Uh, today we are coming from the book of Exodus and we are starting a starting at verse 15. We are, well, we're going to be in verse 15 and we're going to start at verse 11. Uh, did I say verse 15? I probably did. We are in Exodus. We are in chapter 15. We're going to start at verse 11 and we're going down to verse 21. That is Exodus chapter 15. We're starting at verse 11 and we're going down to verse 21. Let's start in the word of God. Chapter 15, verse 11. Who is like you amongst the gods? O Lord, O glorious in holiness, wholesome in splendor, performing great wonders. <laughs> That's verse 11, Exodus 15. And I almost feel like I didn't give it justice. Because the person saying this is excited. He's talking to God and he's asking him a question. So I feel like I didn't do it justice. Because there's a lot in this, in this one verse. Who is like you among the gods, O Lord? Glorious in holiness, awesome in splendor, performing great wonders. Who is like you? 
You'll hear me say over and over and over again that, and, and, and this is amazing because I see where there is some grammar in this particular sentence. There's the word gods, and it's a little g, a little one. <laughs> and then you see, oh Lord, and it's all capped. <laughs> so, oh Lord is all capped, but you see that little g for the little gods. <laughs> and I'm being silly, forgive me. Um, <laughs> but, but, but who is like him? Who is like the God we serve? No one is like the God we serve. Absolutely nothing, absolutely no one. After all, he created everything anyway. So how can anything be greater than the creator? Ooh, I just did a rhyme, didn't I? My wife was getting on the other day about rhyming and unintentionally rhyming, that is. Uh, <laughs> who can be greater? Who is like you amongst the gods? Who can be greater? Mm. Verse 12. You raised your right hand and the earth swallowed our enemies. <laughs> All you had to do was raise your right hand and the, the earth swallowed our enemies. Who can be greater than you? Because there's no one greater than the creator. I'm going to continue to say that because I kind of like the way it rings in my ears. There's none greater than the creator. Uh, say it with me now. Say, say there's none greater than the creator. <laughs> I know I'm being silly. I got a case of the silliness today, but y'all bear with me because it's all right anyway. God's still in it. That's all I care about. That's all any of us, any of us should care about. Verse 13. With your unfailing love, you lead the people you have redeemed. In your might, you guide them to your sacred home. <laughs> With your unfailing love, you lead the people you have redeemed. In your might, you guide them to your sacred home. Leading to your sacred home. Guide them to your sacred home. With an unfailing love. You know, I can talk about love till the cows come home. Well, I can talk about God's love till the cows come home. And I ain't got no cows, so they ain't coming home. I can talk about them all day. I can talk about God's love all my life. Because I know for a fact, fact, mind you, and if you don't know this for a fact, you know, call me and we can discuss this. But I know for a fact, pure, unadulterated fact, not, not, not somebody else told me, not I just happened to read it. No, 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 no. Hmm. You see, there is love that we as humans call love especially before we understand and know what love is, there's, there's this thing that we call love. But unfailing love, God's unfailing love, <laughs> there is literally nothing greater. Because I, 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 I wish I could remember what, what the what the musician says. I'm listening to a lot of music here lately. And there's a young man, and, and, and I'm, I'm totally drawing a blank with his name, but he talks about how God loved him even though he knows who he is. You see, God loves us even though he knows who we are. He loved us before we became into his existence. He loves us when we've done all the dirt that we've done. He, he loves us through all the trouble that we put ourselves in to call upon him to get us out. He loves us. 
Even though some of us have cursed his name, he still loves us. Unfailing love. I, you know, I, I, I know people have heard me say this a million times. It's, it's strange how you can watch a movie and, and, and they throw these, the writers will throw these lines in or, or in the script and people will say it. And they get into the worst trouble. They get into the, the, the worst predicaments that they put themselves in. And you always hear them say the same thing. They either call upon God or they call upon Jesus. And it's strange to, to see. You can sit and you can watch a movie and you can watch a movie. You, you, you can watch a Marvel movie. You can watch the Avengers and somebody in there is calling upon the name of God and the name of Jesus. Even though they have all these things, all, creatures from other planets and other dimensions and, and all this weird stuff, people who can fly and, and little boys, you can shoot spider webs out of their hands. See, see, I got to stop preaching. <laughs> but you will hear someone in these movies call upon the name of Jesus they will call upon the name of God, even in the midst of all this. So the writers had to put it, because nothing, <laughs> nothing will give them the reaction that they would get. I don't care who else that they can put in those, I ain't heard nobody call on on. Abraham, I ain't heard nobody call upon Muhammad. I I never hear him call upon any other name but God or Jesus. Never. And I have yet to see a movie like that. So if you know of one, you know, kick it to me. I'll, I'll sit down and watch and tell you what I think. Yeah, that's right. I'm a critic. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, let me go on. Uh, verse 14. The peoples hear and tremble. Anguish grips those who live in Philistia. Because they, they know that God is coming and they hear him coming. Verse 15, the leaders of Edom are terrified. The nobles of Moab tremble. All who live in Canaan melt away. It doesn't matter who they are. They all melt away because verse 16, terror and dread fall upon them. The power of your arm makes them lifeless as stone until your people pass by, O Lord until the people you purchase pass by. <laughs> they all scared. <laughs> Woo! They all scared. You know, it, it, it doesn't matter who they are. They're all scared and they're all trembling and they're all shaking because the mighty God, the creator of all things, the alpha and the omega is coming for them and they know to get up out of their way. They know that their puny gods don't mean nothing. They know it. They invented their gods so they can have their own way and do what they want to do, but their gods are only the little g, and they know it. Because when the Israelites show up and call on the one true God, that one little itty bitty g ain't going to be able to do nothing. <laughs> I'm animated today, forgive me. I'm kind of tired because it's, it's been a long day. And y'all know I record these during the week. So when you're looking at them on Sunday, I've already recorded them. Uh, and somebody else has already edited them. And I want to thank the guys that edit. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you, trust me. Uh, verse 17. You will bring them in and plant them in your own on your own mountain. The place, O Lord, reserved for your own dwelling. The sanctuary, O oh Lord, that your hands have established. You know, bring them in and plant them like they might be. be, be, be that I wouldn't even give them apple seeds. I, that, 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 hmm, what's, what's good? Cotton, cotton's too good for them. Uh, what kind of seed can? That, that, hmm, how about soy seeds? Yeah. <laughs> you know, plant them like soy seeds on his own mountain. Reserved for his own. I'm going to plant you right here because, see, I, I got some plants in the backyard. I, I, I did my little garden and I planted my little stuff and the dog has been eating all the stuff out the garden. I think I've had like maybe three or four cucumbers and she's pretty much eating everything else. But uh, 
<laughs> this is me complaining. <laughs> He's going to plant them. And then verse 18 says, the Lord will reign forever and ever. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reading this and, and I'm thinking about the lady who was just in the fire, Miss Ramona. And Miss Marona was praising God. She was giving God glory because she was being saved from the fire. And in the next week, we'll be looking back 20 years and we'll be looking at the 9-11 the towers in the Pentagon when he got hit and one plane that went down out in the wilderness. And we'll be looking back and we'll be hearing all the stories. I, uh, one of my jobs when I worked in the Pentagon was to escort people and, and be a part of their interviews whenever they would interview with people who, who came and talked to them. And these were people who had, were in the Pentagon when the plane hit. Uh, one young man, he tells of how they were in one of the conference rooms because he, the, the side of the building that the plane hit had just been redone. So there were things in the walls to keep fire from spreading and, and all. If the plane had a hit, and you, if you've never been to the Pentagon, it's ridiculously huge. It has five sides. Each side is but so, oh, wow, the thing's got to be two, three football fields long. So you got five sides, Pentagon, and it hit that one side. Had it hit any other side, the whole building would have collapsed and came in. But because it hit the side that had already been done, it it was it didn't spread. So one of the folks that I had an opportunity to 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 escort while he was being interviewed. He tells the story of how he was in the room, in the conference room, and there were two people on his right and two people on his left. And when the plane hit, everything just went black. Not a lot of windows, especially on the interior of the Pentagon. Not any windows at all in some places, most places, actually. So it hit and everything just went pitch black. The two people on his right died, the two people on his left died. And I'm 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 reading Ramona's story and I'm 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 thinking of, of this guy. And then I I'm I'm thinking of how Ramona was was praising God, and I'm thinking that this guy should have been praising him too. I don't know if he was or not. I can't remember that part of the story. I, I wish I could. So I'm, I'm I'm thinking more or less that he didn't, because I would have remembered that. But I'm looking at verse 18 and I'm thinking of how Ramona was praising God. And you hear in verse 18, the Lord will reign forever and ever. It's, it's, it's a praise. They're, they're, they're shouting. There's an exclamation point there. So they're excited when they talk about how the Lord will reign forever. Verse 19 says that when Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and charioteers rushed into the sea, the Lord brought the water crashing down on them. But the people of Israel had walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground. You see, there's an excitement because there's an exclamation point there. So when Pharaoh's horses and charioteers rushed into the sea, the Lord brought the water crashing down on them. But the people of Israel had walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground. The times that the Lord had saved them is much like Ramona. The, the Lord had saved her that day from the fire. And I know I, 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 I did escort some others who were telling their stories, and they were praising God. Whew, some of them were praising God so much, one woman just had tears in her eyes. 
And that's all she could do was just praise God and thank him for his blessing. So I, I, I see Ramona. I'm hearing the story of Ramona and I'm hearing this lady. And I'm hearing this. The Israelites had a reason to praise God. Ooh, this, the strong, wonderful reason because God had saved them. From sure death, God had saved them by drowning their pursuers. <laughs> drowning them on in the same dry ground that they had just walked through. <laughs> Let me go on. Verse 20. Then Miriam the prophet Aaron's sister took a tambourine and led all the women as they played their tambourines and danced. <laughs> I know there were those who, who came out the fire on 9-11 and, and they were dancing. Some of them were dragging and some of them were hurting. But I know that there were some that had to be dancing. There were some that, that were praising God so loud and so hard. That's probably the reason why they didn't get any video or pictures of them. Because these people were praising God so loud and so hard. Because I know in my heart it had to happen. Out of all those people who survived through those attacks, there were many, many Christians there, so they were all praising God. Just like Ramona, probably even louder. They were happy to praise God. <laughs> if they had had tambourines, they'd have been out in the street dancing too. And I, I wouldn't put it past them having gotten their tambourine when they got home and danced up and down the street praising the Lord. <laughs> Verse 21, and, 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 and we're done. And Miriam sang this song. Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He has hurled both horse and rider into the sea. <laughs> now, if that's not a reason for you to get your tambourine <laughs> and, 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 and praise God, then what else do you have to praise him for? What was that question at the beginning of the lesson? When have you spontaneously praised God after an emotional event? When have you done it? Was it after hearing something special from your doctor? Was it after your children came home when you thought that something was wrong and they had they had gotten into something? Was it after just, just having something wonderful happen in your life and, and you just pray, like the, the, holding your grandbabies in your hands and, and you just thanking God for them? Holding your children in your hands. Just, 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 just talking to your parents because something unnatural happened where they were and you just call to check on them and now you're praising God because everything is all right. Some of us have made it through this COVID already. We suffered through it. And now we've come out the other side. And we... <laughs> if you wasn't praising God after that because you survived, then I sincerely urge you to go look back at your life. I'm going to urge all of you to go look back at your life anyway because you need to be praising God. That was a breath, a miracle all by itself. It, I need to be praising God because he gives us all these, I don't know how many times, I, I ought to ask, but <laughs> how many breaths do you get a day? How many steps can you take a day? How many times do you get to chew your food every day? How many times did you get food today? How many times have you looked up and saw a ceiling instead of a sky and when you woke up in the middle of the night? You ought to be praising God. You ought to be having your trampoline, trampoline. Tra <laughs> yeah, if you got a trampoline, praise God for your trampoline too. That's that's right. <laughs> But your tambourine, you ought to have it in your hand and praising God. You know what? I'm going to do something 
as I close today, and I'm gonna do something that I, I that I haven't done since I started doing these lessons. I'm gonna give you some homework. Mm -hmm. It's up to you whether you're gonna do it or not. I'm not gonna check it. Holy Spirit might, but I'm not gonna check it. I'm gonna ask you to starting today, take one minute, just 60 seconds and just praise God for 60 seconds. Just for 60 seconds. Tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for bringing me through all the things that you brought me through. Thank you for doing all the things that you've done for us, Father. Thank you for watching over us, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to praise you, Father. Thank you for, for giving us a way out of no way, Lord, because you did not have to do it, Father. But we are thanking you and praising your holy name this day, Father. And we're asking you to hear our call of praise, Father. For we are praising you, Father, for the time that you gave us rest through the night. For the time, Father, that you woke us up in the morning, Father. For the times that you gave us a clarity of mind, Lord. We're, we're just praising you this morning. Father, we're not asking you for anything. We're not asking you to do anything, Father, because we know that you have already done so much for us that we can never, ever have a vessel big enough to put all the blessings in that you've given us. You've given us the joy, Father, of children. You've given us roofs over our head, Father. You, you've given us food to eat, Lord. You've given us the clothes on our back, Father. You give us air conditioner and the heat, Father, and you give us heat when it's cold outside. Lord, you allowed us to breathe, Father. We, we can see, Lord, the things that we need to see, Father. We can speak, Father, the, the things that you would have us to say, Father. We can do all these things, Father, because it's your joy and your love that strengthens us, Father, and gives us any kind of meaning in life. So, Father, we just want to praise you this morning. We want to praise you for this lesson, Lord. We want to praise you for the strength that you've given us that's going to get us through today. Father, we're going to praise you for the sermon that we hear today. We just want to praise you. And we want to thank you for all you've done and all you continue to. We want to praise you for this lesson, Lord. And we ask that it might be placed in our hearts, Father, so that we may be able to tell others, Father, of your love, Father, your, your, your unconditional love, uncompromising love, unbelievable love. We thank you for showing this, all of this on us today, Father. We love you, Lord. And we thank you ever so much for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And that's your homework. Take 60 seconds each day. And I know I prayed for more than 60 seconds. But take 60 seconds each day and just thank God for what he's done for you. Don't, 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 don't have those, those, those rocks crying out for you. On your behalf. Rock can't cry, cry out for you. Rock can't, rock can't move. But you move, and you need to be thanking God for the ability to move. And that's your homework each day, just, just, just for these, these seven days until next Sunday. Just praise God for 60 seconds. Do it in your car. Do it wherever you want to do it. But just, just praise God for 60 seconds a day. I tell you what, things are going to happen. And things are going to move just because you praise him. Thank you for joining us today. I, I had a wonderful time with today's lesson. I pray that you got something out of it. I also pray that you do your homework. <laughs> I love you guys. And, and this has been a way for me to get strength. So I'm praying that all of you get just as much strength out of it as I do. And as always, of course, you know, if you like these videos, give me a thumbs up. And hit the subscribe button down at the bottom so that way you don't miss any of God bless you. God keep you. Enjoy today's sermon. I love you guys. And until next week.
God bless. Bye-bye.